Why are you back here? Clear. We need to expose Umbrella. Watch this. I'm afraid, Claire. I'm afraid of what they're gonna do to this town. You see, Umbrella, they have an incident. I'm talking Chernobyl, if you know what I mean. People are getting sick. Congratulations on the movie. I watched it the other day. It's, uh, I loved it to bits. It's, um, oh, brilliant. Very much is the way that I think you, you hoped for people to, uh, to enjoy it. Was it, it felt a lot more like the, the actual games than it did the, 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 the previous films. I mean, going yeah. in, obviously, yeah. so many people love the games, and at the same time, so many people love these films. So it's, it's a huge weight on your shoulders now going in. So what are your kind of your hopes and fears going in and just kind of in the run up to the release? Yeah, do you know going in was fine because we had very much just you know the felt I think across the board it had felt like uh Paul and Mila created this this uh, very successful franchise uh that had come to an end. You know, it had done, you know, they'd had the final chapter and it had never been about the games. It had always been about Mila's character Alice and it, they'd been an awful lot of fun and super successful. And so when I came in, it was very much, look, let's do the Resident Evil of the games that has never been done before. So there was never really a, a crossover with that world at all. It was very much, we're bringing in a horror guy to tell a horror story, to go back to the games and to really scare people again and, and, and to, to tell a kind of dark, scary story. So it, that was really the, the, the mantra, the sort of thought process behind it. Where, where I'm now, where the pressure is, is now, now it's done. And, you know, it's, the, the tricky thing is, is the, the love, my love of the game, I think is very much up there on screen. Like every frame is something to do with the game. It, the, the narrative is very similar. The characters all come from the game. Um, but you can't just do the game. Otherwise, you might as well play the game because the games are, are amazing. Like, the, you know, the reboot of the second game is one of the, you know, blew my mind when that came out a couple of years ago. Like, it was just like, this is cinema in a, you know, on my, uh, for the first yeah. time I was, and, it, and, it, and you can see its influence on me within the, the, the movie because I was like, this is so cinematic. But I, you need to do, you need to give the audience something that they're not getting from a game when you when you tell a movie, which is, you know, it needs to be its own thing, its own world with characters that are living, breathing human, you know, beings, you know, uh, and and that it's terrifying in a in a way that is different from the games. Um, so that's where it's nerve wracking because obviously people are like nitpicking every looking at every little why, why is this not like the game? Why is that not? And it's like, in fact, the more you're like the games, the more people start picking on it because. If you're not like it at all, then people are like, okay, he's just, he's, he said he's not doing it. You know, he's going off his own way. So they don't even care, you know. Mm -hmm. But it, it's tricky. I, I really, you know, I can't wait for people to see it. Um, but it, it's, yeah, I'm nervous. You gotta help us, Claire. Let the world know what's really going on. In relation to that, I was speaking to the cast the other day, and, and you kind of handpicked those as well. I imagine thinking of the game, but I think you kind yeah. of. You, there was plenty of to and fro with them as well, and they kind of went off and, and looked at the game, maybe the film, yeah. and, and decided yeah. kind of what kind of amalgamation of characters create for, for each, each yeah. person. Huh? Yeah, it, it was, it's an interesting thing. Like, Kaya was the first on to the project, and, you know, I'm, I'm good friends with Alex Arger, who, who, who'd done Crawl and, uh, and watched that, and I was like, I think she's the perfect person. She looks like Claire Redfield, and I, you know, speaking with Alex, I'm like, she is the you know her personality is the right personality to be this kind of drifter character that comes into town and you know mm -hmm. is, is is kind of you know sort of tough uh self-sufficient girl uh, and that sort of fit well but when we were casting it was you know some like through almost more than chance than you know like chris like Robbie Amell and, and, and Tom Hopper as Wesker feel very similar to their computer game counterparts in terms of their look. Uh, whereas Leon, you know, Avon does not look like his, you know, computer game counterpart, but it was really, he was so hard to cast. Like I saw everyone in Hollywood uh, for that role be because it was so important to me because I, that's how I got into the script. When I was writing the script, it's through Leon's 
uh, role that I that I explore the world around me as this rookie that's first day in Raccoon City and he's hung over and he's disheveled, a bit like me as a writer. <laughs> like I'm, I was when I was writing, I was probably hung over most of the time, and. And I needed someone that could carry off that kind of carpenter anti-hero that had the, the sort of, you know, uh, the sort of humor of a, a Napoleon Wilson from from uh, from Assault Precinct 13 to um, to the the kind of like haplessness of, of Jack Burton from, you know, a Big Trouble in Little China. And I sort of wanted that. Because that, that was, was it difficult to hold into that kind of comedy? Because obviously this is a kind of a, it's a horror game, an action yeah. game, you know. And to, to yeah. kind of get yeah. that balance is, is really complicated, like Predator and things like that. I mean, yeah, and that's very kind of cheesy. But that kind of thing yeah. it can come off really cheesy, and it, but at the same time, it, it's, it's very difficult balance, no? It is a really difficult balance, and I found when we were auditioning for that role in particular that so many people played him as the comedy character, as the sidekick, you know, and I was like, no, this is, you know, he's, he's the lead along, you know, along with, with Kaya and, and, and Robbie, uh, uh, and, uh, they're, they're everybody, it's an ensemble and he's not some comedy character and it's, and no, that was the biggest real dark in the film actually. Yeah. 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 He, he's, he really, he's fine. Like, and I'm really interested to see how people react to that when the when the movie comes out because I think like I I absolutely love it. It always like I find it very funny, very dry, an amazing actor. But so it was a balance, and yeah, my thing to the cast was always like, love the games. Whether you're a gamer or not, Robbie is a super gamer, or you're not. Kaya is not a huge gamer. I was like, fall in love with the games and understand that. I love the game. Just the director and the writer of this. I am in love with the what I am telling. So follow me on that journey. But we don't have to be identical. We are our own own thing. So I don't. You know, Tom came to me like, "Do I need frosted tips?" You know, yeah. uh, Avon's like, "You know, how do I hold the gun? Do I hold it constantly like Leon holds it?" And there are a couple of moments where he's doing it, and I'm like, "Yeah, okay, but it's this is not cosplay. This is your living, breathing characters, and I really need you to sort of." become that you know mm -hmm. and then i think something that really especially for me resonated with me was the fact that it, it i mean it's set in late 90s but it felt very yeah. 70s 80s well at the same time yeah was it difficult to get that vibe the, the kind of the, the the retro feel but to get it just right because i don't know it really threw it back to the 80s action horror yeah. movies i loved as a yeah. kid so i mean that, that's, that was why i most enjoyed about it but it must have been difficult at the same time to get that 96 feeling i mean it was it was brilliant that i saw for example sophia from the golden girls in the opening scene <laughs> yeah, that comes out of nowhere, doesn't it? Um, yeah, it. Um, no, I think. Um, I think the the it was really fun. Like because it was, we knew we were going to set it in the nineties um, because the game. You know, when it came out, it was set in the nineties, and it was like, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna be the game, and we're gonna do that. We're gonna set it back when the game was set, but it's in this town. This deer hunter style town that 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 has been forgotten by america you know and it's dying this this sort of, and I, and i was actually in the that exact town while we were filming you know that that was the the the, the place we were filming was like town, um, yeah, dying was completely kind of yeah desolate yeah. Town, town yeah town and and the thing you discover and i've been in a lot of these locations is you discover like your grandma's house is like it's not whatever the year is the house isn't decorated to that year so i didn't want this town to be like constantly 1998 1998 yeah, yeah. it's not it's it's decorated from the 70s and the 80s and and i wanted this kind of timeless place where where you know like robbie plays chris as this you know high school hero that that's kind of just stayed in this small town and kind of just let the time slip by and He's, he's still everything everything in the place is just a little dated and old and and I wanted that vibe mixed with like some great needle drops and uh, and nods you know palm pilots and and four non blondes and and Jennifer Page you know to the to that period of the 90s but then filmed like I was filming a 70s conspiracy thriller mm -hmm. so I yeah. shot with like zoom lenses and single camera and really you know I you know, and the, the movies I was referencing, obviously Carpenter all the time. I'm a huge Carpenter nut. And then Exorcist and 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 The Shining and 
I, you know, I wanted a real se- sort of 70s vibe there um, and and really serious. I wanted to take this. The, the reason I love that period is no matter w- if the movie, you know, lands or not of that period, they always, they believed in it. Before Scream, people believed in their horror, you know, <laughs> like, and... And like whatever yeah. was happening, the Stephen King world, which I sort of grew up on, people when when the the clowns or the whatever it would be, you know, the horror was there. It was real in that world, and I wanted to make this. I wanted yeah, it wasn't this as self-aware as it is now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I and I really wanted to go go to that. So um, yeah, but I love the yeah the, the the style of it. Like there were no drones on on set. Like there was no drone shots. There was no sort of crazy CG camera moves that you, that were physically impossible. Everything had a real like retro feel to how we were, were, were making the movie. When years, I'm a lot still. We have to contain this. Time to get up there, big of hope. Shall we go? Oh, a destination. I know you were kind of fed up with so much zombie fare that you wanted to, I mean, you wanted to keep some elements now from the monsters that yeah. you wanted to up the up the ante and kind of make, make something fresh so i think you kind yeah. of you went for a more of a you mentioned in i think it was in the press notes you mentioned something about the chernobyl miniseries was kind of an inspiration yeah. where yeah. did you kind of yeah. get this idea for the monsters because i think yeah. it's actually on screen on 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 camera no you film most of the, the zombies yeah the yeah for sure as much as much as we could my mantra was obviously to to, to film in camera um and and you know when things get sort of, sort of to the huge level, you have to go you know to the world of, of of computer of CG. But as much as I could, I wanted this real and grounded, and and I wanted to to feel uh, disturbed by what was happening here. And I was the, the one thing we connected you know with Constantine. Uh, you know, as soon as I sort of we started talking about this movie, we were very connected in our references of just, uh, Constantine's a German company and, uh, you know, I'm an English guy, half German. We're both in LA, we're sort of slightly outsiders and we saw America in a very objective view, you know, sort of outside view. So we were very connected in in sort of interesting, like there was a movie at the time that came out called Dark Waters, which is a Teflon thing, about these kind of dying American towns and, and, and the, sort of stuff that was happening, you know, the Flint water crisis, even like Detroit, Rust Belt and all that kind of stuff. We'd love talking about these references and stuff. And it was sort of, even Deer Hunter was a, a film we talked about a lot. So these were kind of references we were talking about back and forward. And then the Chernobyl TV show came out and it just blew us away as a group yeah. because it is phenomenal. It's funny when it shouldn't be funny, you know, it's got like a really dry humor in there. It's dark, it's scary, it's real, but it's, it's, I just couldn't, it's the best bit of TV I've ever seen in my life. Um, and we just like completely stunned by this. So, um, and I've never been so disturbed in seeing like when the radiation sickness sort of went through Chernobyl, like seeing these people, like the the makeup was, was terrifying and it became a really, a uh, good uh, sort of uh, benchmark for where we wanted to go with the zombies in 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 the movie is that I really wanted to feel that like like feeling of being slightly disturbed by what's happening to this town that this sickness was was creeping across this town and it wasn't just you know I'm I'm hugely influenced by the movies that Resident Evil is based on you know the Romero world but obviously zombies are, have a huge it was the trickiest thing, you know, I had like Romero, I have Danny Boyle, I have Zack Snyder, I have, you know, whoever you, you look at, it, you know, these people have all sort of presented zombies in a different way. And it was a really tricky thing to, and zombies have been used a lot in comedy, you know, Shaun of the Dead, like, like I needed to make them scary again and real again and, and, and disturbing. And so, yeah, we went, we cast the big thing, the big decision we made was, not to cast extras. Um, if we use stunt guys, which we had to a lot, they were actors first that had the stunt, you know, certificates and stuff like that. So all the all the people you see on screen are proper actors, and then everything was real, like the eyes, the the contacts, everybody's fitted. And this 
to say how hard that was to do in a pandemic to have like the contacts you know and people the the specialists to come in and do the eyes and stuff like that and then the makeup was all yeah it was this Steve Newburn did an amazing job in in sort of like um creating this kind of silicon kind of translucent makeup and and just to feel a sickness sort of get bigger and bigger and bigger in in, in across the movie and so yeah we really tried I mean with everything even with the Lisa Trevor thing and even with the liquor like we had performance artists play the liquor it wasn't just completely created in cg yeah. there was there was there was movement artists and even the dog you know like i was doing stuff with the dog and we, we would have like performance artists doing stuff for the dog there on screen when we couldn't have the dog you know so as much as i could i just kept it real and retro you know old school techniques um so that was a very long answer very oh, no, 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 i don't want to i don't want to keep you anymore thanks thanks thank very much for your time it's always good to catch up with you john and i wish you the best luck with the film i'm sure it's going to go down really well and hopefully speak thank to you about the, uh, the sequel sometime in the future i would love that i would love that all right that's brilliant take care <laughs> have a good day cheers then we're gonna take umbrella down